Hi guys, welcome back to Garage Tech Automotive and today I want to talk to you about the Porsche Motorsport lithium ion battery. This thing is pretty damn mega, it's an amazing bit of kit, it's pretty old now. This was first introduced in 2010 on the GT3 and GT3 RS, it's also an optional on the Boxer as well, um, but it's a lightweight battery. Obviously there are others on the market now these days, but these are really, really rare really expensive and what I want to do today is just talk to you a little bit about it, how to charge it, how to store it and most importantly how much it weighs compared to the conventional battery. Okay so as I said before first things first let's talk about the weight that's the most important thing that we're interested in about this battery. Um, it's obviously it's a lot smaller as you can see by the height but width wide is pretty much the same as conventional battery um, so it fits in the same battery tray as your normal conventional battery. But the main thing is this thing is about 11 kilos less than a standard 12 volt 60 ampere per hour battery. This weighs just about 5.2 kilos. And to prove that to you, I've just got my scales here. I'm gonna put these on just so you can see. Zero it. Let's do that again. So there we go, 5.1 uh, kilos. So that's a massive weight saving over a normal battery. I mean, I could literally throw this battery around. It is so light. It's absolutely ridiculous how light it is. Um, but there you go, guys. That's the main thing about the, the weight. As I said before, it's about 11 kilos lighter than your normal 12 volt, 60 ampere per hour battery. Um, cost of these things, again, they're not cheap when they were first available on the GT3 and GT3 RS when it came out in 2010. They were around about a 2,000 euro option. Uh, after that, you could then purchase them um, for around about 2,500 euros. Um, they're really difficult to, to find these batteries. And now, I found a couple of places in the States that are selling them, and they're about four four thousand dollars for one of these batteries so that's actually mega money and probably the best place to try and find these now are probably on the forums on the porsche forums i'm sure there's some guys on there that are selling them how much they're selling them for i don't know as i said they're pretty rare so um i suppose people can ask for what they want really but the big thing is is what sort of condition are they in now obviously they're quite old as i mentioned before 2010 they were released so this one is from 2011 so you can see it's nearly 10 years old um, and it's still in great condition. Um, that's the great thing about the lithium ion batteries. If they're really well looked after and they do last a long time. Um, talking about the voltages, etc. cetera, then um, it's rated at 12.8 volts, but only 18 amperes per hour. So it's not a lot. And then 480 amps. I just want to show you the voltages on this because it's pretty impressive. You can see my altimeter. Now, this has been out of the car for a couple of days and it's still sitting at 13.3 volts. So as I said, I've had, I've had it out of the car for probably two days and it hasn't changed. So it really does hold the, the uh, voltage and capacity um, really well, as you'd expect from a, from a lithium ion battery. So as I said, it's 12.8 um, volts. That's kind of what it's rated at. It only has four cells compared to your normal conventional battery, which would have six cells. So it's got four cells, so it's roughly about 3.2 volts per cell compared to the six cell battery, which was roughly around about 2.1 volts per cell. So due to its higher specific power, this battery does have a lower capacity at only 18 amperes per hour. Uh, compared to the conventional 60 amperes per hour on your normal 12 volt lead acid battery. But the difference is really here is with the lead acid battery, it shouldn't really be discharged more than 50% of its residual capacity. And this lithium ion battery could go down to about 20% without reducing its starting capability. So that's one of the other benefits of it. 
Some of the disadvantages about this battery though is that it can be affected by temperature change. So it's not very good or it shouldn't really be used in temperatures less than zero degrees centigrade. And also then if you're using it in really hot temperatures, so over 40 degrees centigrade, it can then lead to impaired performance and premature aging um, of the cells in the battery. If you know much about lithium ion batteries, they don't like to be used in the cold. So it is recommended that you switch it out to a normal lead acid battery if you're gonna be using it in really cold temperatures or in extreme uh, heat or high temperatures. Now, the other thing I want you to talk about is um, charging and how to charge this battery, because that's really important. Um, first things first, this can be retrofitted to most modern vehicles, normal vehicles, but that don't have a battery management system. And there's no need to do any kind of modifications to the alternator or the charging system. Um, you can just swap it straight in. If you are looking to switch this into a later vehicle, which has a battery management system, I believe you will need to get it coded to the car. So just watch out for that if that's what you're thinking about. Um, now, notes on the charger and what charging chargers to use. You should only really use a charger which has the IU charging characteristics. Um, so these can then be connected to the battery for extended periods of time without actually damaging it. The maximum charging voltage should not exceed 14.8 volts and it shouldn't uh, exceed more than 20 amps of current. So the best kind of charging amount of current is approximately three to five amps. Now I use this um, CTEC one, as some of you might know already, the CTEC ones are the same as the Porsche ones, they're just rebranded basically. Um, but I use this CTEC one and I use it on the motorbike setting the reason for that is because um, it only charges then at 0 0.8 0 0.8 amps and it's less than 14.4 volts so it's not going to damage the battery um, and obviously if you know about these battery charges it just does different charging rates over time and just keeps it topped up as a trickle charger so that's what that's what i use um, in terms of storage etc when i when i'm not using the car um, I just disconnect battery. That's just the way I like to do it. It saves in the battery being sat there with a slight discharge on it. And then what I'll do is then I'll connect the charger uh, every every two weeks or so just to keep it topped up. And every week or so I'll just check it with my multimeter to check to see what the, the battery voltage level is at. If I see it's starting to drop slightly, then I'll stick the charger on for um, overnight or for uh, 10 to 15 hours or whatever is, is, is necessary. One of the other great things about this battery, it actually has a built-in warning system. So it's got a buzzer built into it. So if the battery level starts to get a bit low, then a warning buzzer will, be, will sound. Now I've never heard that on this battery because I've, I've never let it get down to um, a voltage that that would happen. But it's got two warning systems. The first warning, it will beep three times every 15 seconds when the residual capacity gets down to about 20%. At this point, then it should definitely be recharged. The second warning then comes in if the residual capacity falls below 5%, and then that will then beep two times every five seconds. So at that point, then the battery is um, needs immediately charging to avoid any kind of damage to it. So that's it really with my review of the battery. What I'll do now is I'll show you it in place in, in the car. I'll, I use it on my um, Cayman S, um, so it's an easy swap out. You don't need to do any kind of modifications. You literally take out your uh, exist, existing battery and put this in and bolt it into place. It is really that simple. So I'll show you that. So as you can see here, this is where my original battery sits. So it's dead easy to fit these. I mean, the battery's so light, it's easy to just put it in and out. So just pull the cables off the way. And when it's in, you can just slide it all the way over to the um, or to the right side. Uh, and then all you need to do is put the clamp back on. So it's just a 13 mil bolt. At this stage, I haven't tightened up any of the terminals. Just gonna show you roughly. Uh, 
And then you should always put the positive one on first. And reasons for that is to just to make sure you avoid any short circuits. So you don't want to leave the negative one on there first. Uh, leave, leave the negative one on there whilst messing around with the positive because if you were to then touch the body with your spanner, if you're going to short it out. And trust me, that makes a really big spark. Uh, and next then, you just put on the negative. Uh, I'll do it for just the purpose of the video. But. Just tighten that up like that. And that's it, that's the battery in, all secured. And I've just saved myself 11 kilos of weight. So top stuff there, as again, storage. I obviously, if, you, if you're a bit of a Porsche fan and you know these, then you want to keep the um, bonnet or the frunk open so you don't uh, cause it to lock and then you need another battery to um, to open it up using the emergency part. But easy enough, all I do when I come to store it, I literally just undo the negative terminal and just put it to the side. And that's it, all ready for storage. And then if it needs to be topped up, as I said, I put the battery charger on it probably every one to two weeks just to keep it topped up. That's it, guys. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy these videos, hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, and thanks for watching. Take care.